Hello and welcome to the seventh video in this series. I'm back in test.ipynb and I've added at the top the import pandas as pd. You should have a file that looks very similar to this one. So we've got the imports at the top, then we're making our session, I'll just hit shift and enter, shift and enter. Then we have the instrument count granularity, shift and enter. Set up our URL to get the candles, print the URL with shift and enter. Set up our parameters dictionary, print our parameters just for sanity. And then the important part here, getting the response by pressing shift and enter, status code is 200, and then we have our JSON response. That's all exactly the same code as we had a couple of videos ago. What I'd like to do in this video is save to a table the candles, much like we saved the instruments in the last video. It's just it's slightly more complicated because we have nested keys and things like that inside this JSON. So when we look at the JSON, we can see that we have three keys at the top level here. We have instrument, granularity, and candles. The candles are a list, as we've seen in a previous video, and inside this list we have a load of objects representing each candle, which have whether it's complete, the volume, the time, the bid, the mid, and the ask prices. We would like to have a table that has, for each candle, the date, the volume, and then the bid open, bid high, bid low, bid close, and then the same for the mid and the same from the ask, all representing different columns in the same table. The way we're going to do this is to create a couple of lists. One will be the bid, the mid, the ask, and the other one will be the O, H, L, and C. And what we'll do is we'll iterate through both of these lists together to produce us every combination of column name that we actually need. So to get started, let's store our response in data. And now double check the keys that we have inside data. We can see we have instrument granularity and candles. If we want to look at the length of the candles part of data, so how many candles we have in the list, we need to type len, open brackets, data, square brackets, and the candles key. And we can see that we have 10 candles inside our list. First of all, let's make a loop that loops through these 10 candles. So we'll say for candle in data candles, colon, and then we'll print the candle. And you can see that we're getting our candles printed out sort of nicely in the screen here. I'm going to press escape and A whilst in this cell to make a cell above and now create a couple of lists. One is a list for the prices, which will be equal to mid, bid and ask. And the other one will be called OHLC, which is equal to O, H, L and C. Shift and enter just to store those. Again, I'm going to press escape and A just a couple of times to add some new cells. Now what I'd like to do is make a loop through each of the prices in OHLC so you can see how this is going to work. So we'll type for price in prices and then nest inside there for OH in OHLC and then we'll print a formatted string where we print the price underscore OH and hit shift and enter and see what comes out. So what you can see is we loop in an outer loop through prices which is mid, bid and ask and each time we take one of those we loop through the four values in OHLC which are stored in OH. So we loop mid and then OHLC, so we get printed mid OHLC, and then bid OHLC, and then ask OHLC. And these are what we're going to use to make our column names in our price data frame that we're going to save to file. So I'm going to double tap delete and delete these columns that are here. Now if we go back to the list of candles that we've printed, what we can see is we've got the volume and the time, and then we've got our bid mid and ask keys with the corresponding objects and the price. So we're going to loop through all of our candles. Let's make a new cell just above, and in here I'm just going to take the first candle. So if we look at the first candle, and imagine we're looping through all of the candles, what we're going to need to do for each candle is take the value under the volume key, the value under the time key, and then we're going to need to take the value in the bid key, which is an object, and inside that object then take the value for the O, the H, the L, and the C. To do that, we'll use exactly the same loop as we've done here. So to start saving our candle data, first of all, we'll make our underscore data is equal to a new list. Now, one thing I don't want to do is I don't want to save a candle if it's not being completed. That means this complete value under the complete key will be false. So in the case that I have a candle where complete is false, then we're just going to do what's called continuing, which means just go to the next iteration without executing any more of the code. So we do that by typing if candle open brackets is complete is equal to false continue. So our for loop will run and if the candle complete is equal to false then we'll just go to the next iteration and get the next candle in the list. In other words we won't process any candle that isn't complete. Now what we need to do is create a new object for the data that we want to save. So we're going to type new underscore dict is equal to a new object and then say that the new dict time key is equal to the candle's time and the new dict volume key is equal to the candle volume. Last thing I'd like to do then here is just print this new dict 
hit shift and enter. And now you can see that we are saving nine candles here, so we're missing the tenth one, which is the one that's incomplete, it's always the current running candle. We want to store these in the our data list. So at the end of each loop, we'll do our data dot append open brackets new dict. What we can also do is take out the printing here, and then on a new line, when everything's executed, we can print our data. And what you see is we have a list here now. It's not that easy to read here, but it's a list of objects with the time and the volume for each candle. Of course, what we're missing here are the prices. That's the important data. Just to make sure the logic is absolutely clear. We have data here, the candles key, and the first candle, which gives us our object with complete volume time bid mid ask. Let's say I want the information for the opening bid price for this candle. The way I'll do that is to type square brackets bid and then square brackets and speech marks O. And that gives me this open price. So when I'm looking for the prices down here below new dict and volume, what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through the prices array, which is mid bid and ask, and nest inside that like we did here, the OHLC value that we have storing that in OH. That will mean that in sequence I'm going to look for the mid OHLC, bid OHLC and ask OHLC. So inside here I'm effectively going to do what we're doing here for each of the candles. So I'll ask for bid OHLC, mid OHLC, etc, etc. So to do that then we'll type for price in prices and then nest for OH in OHLC and then new dict, open brackets, a formatted string, make the column name the price underscore the OH and set that equal to the candle and then the price which will be ask mid or bid and then the OH which will be OH, L or C. And now when I run this and print our data you can see that we have a lot more information. Let's just change this and print just the first item in our data and you can see that we have an object with the time, the volume and then we have mid O, mid H, mid L, mid C bid O and so on. So we have all of the prices. So as in the last video, the last thing to do here is make a data frame. So we'll type candles data frame is equal to PD dot data frame from dict and our data. We can then take a quick look at this by typing candles data frame shift and enter. And you can see we have a nice table here with the time, the volume and all of the relevant prices that we'll be using for our backtesting and for our trading. So the last thing to do then is to save this to file, which is something that we'd already done in the previous video. So we're just going to say candles underscore df dot two pickle and then euro us dollar underscore h1 dot pkl. And then much as in the previous video, we can read this back in. We'll call a data frame test and say test is equal to pd dot read pickle euro us dollar h1 dot pkl. And last but not least, test dot test underscore df shift df shift and enter. And you can see that we've read our file in. And the reason for doing this it should be fairly obvious is in a few videos time we're going to be saving a lot more data and it's rather than request it from the OANDA API fresh each time it's the same data and it's historical data we might as well save it all into file and then use the files that's going to make our analysis our back testing and things a lot faster. Right then that's it for this video we've come quite far we've saved our tradable instruments to file we've seen how we can save candle prices to file and in the next video we're actually going to loop through all of the major currency pairs and save around three or four thousand candles of historical data of those to file so we can start looking at some analysis and back testing. So hopefully that made some kind of sense. Thanks very much for watching. Comments, questions, welcome as always. Otherwise, see you in the next video.